Greetings, my mother, brothers and sisters of the Discalced Carmelite Secular Order, and to those of you who are interested in the Secular Order of the Discalced Carmelites. This is the 11th in a series of videos that I have been making to address some of the things that are found in this book that I wrote, Welcome to the Secular Order of the Discalced Carmelites. I wrote the book after 12 years experience of being the general delegate in Rome. Uh, and you now still after 24 years, I'm still a part of the secretariat, although I'm not the general delegate. Uh, there's a new general delegate from the province of California. Uh, after me, there was Father Alziner from Brazil for nine years. Uh, and then in those nine years, that he was the general delegate, I remained the delegate for Asia Oceania. There's a new general delegate, Father Ramiro Casa OCD, from the province of California. He's by birth Mexican, his family is Mexican, but he's a member of the Calif of California, Arizona province. He will be, in the next couple of weeks, he will be moving to Rome and taking responsibility. Father Alzina will return to Brazil. I've often said that one of the best things I did for the Secular Order in the 15 years that I was in Rome for the uh, General Delegate was find Father Alzina to be my replacement. He did an excellent job. Um, he doesn't need me to say he did an excellent job. But, uh, he, he continued what we began in 1997, when Father Camilo Oxise created the Office of the Secular Order. But anyway, in my experience, I wrote down some initial, in the first chapter of this book, I wrote down what I thought were the essential elements of the discernment process for the vocation to the Secular Order. And there were six points. The first point was practicing member of the Roman Catholic Church, practicing member of the Catholic Church. Second point, under the protection of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, under the influence of St. Teresa, third point, Saint Teresa, influence of St. Teresa, St. John of the Cross. Fourth point, move to make a commitment. That's what we spent the last two videos on speaking about, the commitment to the order a commitment to the order. As I've pointed out before many times, there are many people who are fans of St. Teresa, St. John of the Cross, St. Therese, Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, another saint, who in all likelihood will be the fourth doctor of the church from the Carmelite order. Um, Elizabeth of the Trinity, uh, uh, Teresa of Jesus of the Andes. There are many people who are fans of Carmelite spirituality who love People, the, the personalities, love the saints that we have. But not all of them are moved to make a commitment to the order. So I'm talking about those who are making a commitment to the order. This is what our interest is. So that the things that I say, while well, some may apply to those who want to be disciples of St. Teresa or disciples of St. Therese or disciples of St. John of the Cross, what I'm talking about are those who want to commit themselves to the order. And as I pointed out in the last video and underlined uh, rather forcefully, I hope, was the importance of the commitment that is made to the community. The commitment to the order is concrete. I'm a member of the order because I'm a member of uh, now uh, uh, Commissariat, the Commissariat of Indonesia. That's what makes me uh, uh, my, make my vows and I'm incarnated in this jurisdiction, and I'm a member of the order. So it's the same with the secular orders. Make a commitment to the community. Even those persons who, for some reason or another, find themselves in what you might call isolated status because of the inability to make meetings in the building, they're still part of a community. They still have to be registered in the community and make their promises to a community in the community even if they cannot come to meetings. So that's the, the f four elements we've done so far. 
Today I want to talk about the fifth element. I want to begin to, begin to talk about the fifth element. And what is the fifth element? To seek the face of God. To seek the face of God. Let me just read the whole definition again and see how this fits in. I would describe, remember the second order of St. Teresa, of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and St. Teresa of Jesus as a practicing member of the Catholic Church who under the protection of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and inspired by St. Teresa of Jesus and St. John of the Cross makes the commitment to the order to seek the face of God. What do I mean by to seek the face of God? Are we looking for a vision? No, we're not looking for a vision. We're not looking for uh, to hear voices. We're not looking to see things. We're not looking to experience levitation. We, we're not looking for strange things. We're looking for the face of God. I, I get inspired by one of the Psalms that we say in the first... On Wednesday afternoon in the first week of the Psalter, in the first week of the Badat, of the, of the Divine Office, lit, the Liturgy of the Hours, in the first week on Wednesday afternoon at the beginning of the second Psalm, it's actually the second half of Psalm 27, but at the beginning of the second Psalm, it says, O Lord, hear my voice when I call, have mercy and answer. Of you, my heart has spoken. Seek his face. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. I frequently read that to myself at the beginning of periods of meditation when I'm going to make a mental prayer. There's a revelation there. The, re the revelation is that the Father has a face. We can use the imaginary face of Jesus that we see many times on sacred heart statues or pictures of the sacred heart or the, the, the countless ways in which we can see Jesus re represented. But that's not the face we're looking for. We're looking for the face of the Father and we do this in our meditation. I talked about meditation when I talked about Mary and how what makes us the Marian order of the church is that we pray as Mary the, by pondering in the heart. Pondering is a wonderful English word. It's more than thinking. It's really reflecting. And in this uh, commitment that we make to the order, uh, the first thing we're doing is we're talking about Carmel and prayer. I've often been asked, is Carmel prayer? Is that the is that the song that's is that what Carmel is, prayer? And I, I'm I'm never quite sure how to answer that question because they don't know exactly what the person who's asking it is looking for. If you, if it means that if you if you pray you've done everything you're supposed to do, just say your prayers or make your meditation, and then that's it. Well, no, that's not what karma is. That's not what the this secular world of discounts karma is. There's more to it than that. There's a whole other aspect, of the whole other fruit of prayer, of, of meditation. Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer me. Of you, my heart has spoken. Seek his face. So this is what the Discalced Carmelite Secular Order member commits himself to do. To seek the face of God. The reason why I picked that phrase is because it's, to me, very significant. Uh, I've chosen this one, this phrase, because it's scriptural. It's from the scriptures. We say it every Wednesday when we say the psalm, and expresses the nature of contemplation our, from our point, from our part of view. There's two parts of contemplation, but from our point of view, in our contemplation, it's as I put in the book here: a wondering observance of God's word and work, in order to know, love, and serve Him. Oh, contemplation, of course, requires. For, for contemplation according to St. Teresa, St. John of the Cross, requires an action of God. 
our contemplation disposes us, disposes us mentally, emotionally, psychologically to the communication of God. We have to wait, seek, seek his face. This is the foundation of our prayer and over the next video or two, I will discuss what that nature of that prayer is. How do we prepare? How do we experience? How are we formed? How are we formed to be men and women of prayer? as secular order members. Easy for monks or friars, rather friars, in monasteries and nuns and cloisters. It's a unique challenge, but the grace is given. There's a unique challenge to the secular order member to enjoy a real life of prayer. It's a challenge, but there's grace. Please hit, hit the subscribe button if you want. And uh, then if you do hit the subscribe button, hit, hit the alarm button, the little bell that's next to it. And like if you like this video. And if you have any questions, please write them. May God bless you all. Thank you.